Hey guys, how's it going? It's Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons again, and I hope you are making it a great day. Today, I'm going to be covering a wicked lick, the thing that you've just heard at the beginning of this video. I'm going to be deconstructing it and showing you how to get it in your plane. But this one goes out to Eric Brewington. Brew Dog, this one is for you. And the reason why I'm bringing Eric up is because Eric is one of the Academy members over at Scott's Bass Lessons, and I can't remember how the discussion came about, but we were doing, we do monthly, well actually, we do live streams every week, but we were on, we were doing a live stream with me and Eric and a bunch of academy members were, were there. And we were talking about, Eric was saying how he was finding it a little tricky to start using thirds within his bass lines. And we were, I was talking about different techniques you can use to get thirds into your bass lines. And while I was doing that, for some reason, I played something that went like over a C dominant of that sound, right? I was explaining how you could do a chromatic run up to a third and out of nowhere came. And I just thought it was the coolest lick. And then I tried it to the, from the seven to the root. Okay, so, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I think this is just another great example of every time I pick up the bass, I'm looking for something new. And I think everybody should be doing that, okay? Yes, it's cool to practice your arpeggios and your scales and your bass lines and transcription, but always be looking for something new. And when you find it, make sure you rinse the hell out of it and get it into your playing, because if not, it's going to be a great idea and a great thing when you found it and then you're going to be forget you're going to forget about it you know in a few days time and that you know that inspiration that great moment you had will be gone so make sure you're recording yourself or writing this stuff down in some way so you can track it and then keep you know referring back to what you've been doing and getting into your plane but anyway this lick before we get into the lick i want to say that it's over a c7 chord okay c dominant 7 so Okay, that's the sound. You know, we've all heard that, you know, the guitar player's playing that sound before. But if you haven't heard me talk about what a bass player is and what a bass player does, I'll just recap that as well, because I think somewhere along the line, it's really, you know, it's been forgotten what bass players should actually do. Like guitar players, they play chords, right? And keys players, piano players, they play chords. Bass players, we do the same thing. We play chords, but instead of generally playing the chord all at the same time, like one of the other rhythm section members might do, we outline the chord by using the notes from the chord, the chord tones. Okay, and that's how we do the same job as the rest of the rhythm sec section. Okay, now we don't need to use all of the chord tones all of the time. We could just groove on a root. You know, or we could use the root of the fifth. You know, we could use the root fifth and the seven. fifth and seven. We could use the root fifth, seven and third. You know, that's how we create our bass lines. And a lot of people, they get caught in this, oh, should I use chord tones? Should I use scales? Okay. Chord tones, chord tones, chord tones, guys. This is how, you know, guitar players and keys players, you know, outline the chords. This is how we have to outline the chords as well. So think rhythm first, then apply your chord tones to the rhythm. And then on top of that, that's when you need to be thinking about scales and modes and things like that. But don't put the cart before the horse. So let's look at this lick, okay? I hate to call it a lick because it's got a bad vibe about it, but I think, you know, learning licks, let's put a different label to it, learning vocabulary, okay, which is what a lick is. If I say, if I open the door and say, hey, John, how you doing? Every time I open the door, I'm pretty much going to say, if John's at the door, hey, John, how are you doing? I'm not going to think to myself, oh, no, I have to be original with what I say. Otherwise, I'm going to beat myself up, okay? It's okay to hear a chord 
and have vocabulary that you, you use on that chord. Yes, you can change the rhythm, you can change the dynamic, the articulations you're doing, but it's just, you know, learning vocabulary as licks, you know, is an important part of becoming a great bass player and a great musician. So, as I said, this lick is over a, a C7 type sound, okay? C7 types of chord, and the chord tones are C, E, G, B flat, and C. And you should know these. You should know these all over the neck. If you are an academy member, uh, blah. If you are an academy member, full of blah, full of lob. If you are an academy member, go check out the scales and arpeggio course. It's like 10 hours long and it covers how to learn this stuff all over the fingerboard in a zillion different ways. So check that out. So we've got the notes, okay? C, E, G, B flat, and C. Or you can think about it like this root, major third, fifth, flat seven, and root, okay? Root, third, major third, fifth, flat seven, and then the root, okay? So all this lick is. It's actually derived from that little chromatic run that you might have heard so many bass players using, where I'm going from the second up to the third, okay, of the scale, but really, all you want to be thinking is a little chromatic run up to the third. So. Where you're just going chromatically up to the third, okay? Loads of bass lines are like that, where you just take the information that you've got roots and then just a chromatic and da -dee da up to the third. And all I've done with this lick is so it's using that little chromatic run up to the third, but breaking it up using octaves and open strings. So let me just work out. So to hear it in context, we'll do this. That's it in context, just on its own, it's this. So all I'm doing is breaking, it's the same thing, but I'm, and then breaking it up like that, okay? So what I really recommend when learning any, you know, licks like this, is isolating the part that you want to work on, instead of sort of working on all this bit, we just want to be looping around. Okay, so let's slow that down. So, one, two, three, four. Now, real slow. So, one, two, three. I'm going to break it down for you. Just doing it like this so you can hear it. Okay, so now, what, is, what am I actually playing? So this first one is... Okay, so open A, hammer on the D. I'm not going, I'm hammering on. And then play the D octave. Okay. And then there's a dead note. Okay, so... Now lots of people might be thinking, ah, that's an E flat. It's, you're playing over a C dominant seven chord. Why, ah, that doesn't work because that's a minor third. Remember, we're just we're resolving to the E. We're resolving. So that E flat's just a passing note. It doesn't matter that it's not in the harmony that we're playing over. You, you know, <coughs> I'm actually going to be doing a, a lesson on um, breaking away from the harmony that's going to be coming either next week or the week after. So, t t you know, keep a lookout for that. I'm going to talk more about this type of thing. So... E flat, so open D, hammer on, octave, E flat, E flat, so. 
and then open A again, and then hammer on the E, and then E octave. That's that all, it, all it is. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I'm plicking, plick, plucking, plicking, plicking, plucking as well. So open A, hammer on D, octave, dead note. So it's that, that sound. High octave on the E, E flat, pull off. So E flat to the A and then pick the E and then high E. Loop it round. Faster. Okay, and you can do the same thing from the flat seven to the root. Ah. Then the third, then up to the fifth. So that's the. There you get two, three, four. Stuff like that. And you can mix and match it, you know, so. You know, and just, just mess around with it, you know, just put it in and just keep looping that around and fitting it in when you can. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. Again, if you haven't checked out the Academy at Scott's Bass Lessons, go and do that. It is an absolutely epic place to learn bass online. In fact, it's the best place to learn bass online. We've got, you know, live stream seminars every week, step-by-step -step courses, an amazing community. Shout out to the Academy community. I absolutely love you. And a huge shout out to Eric Brewington, Brewdog, I absolutely love you, mate. Other than that, guys, take it easy and get this stuff in the shed. The 2015 Kickstarter Challenge. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Hello all. Hello.